This is East Carolina Offensive Coordinator Donnie Kirkpatrick. We are talking one of my favorite things, hired football on the Sports Objective. Welcome into the Sports Objective. We appreciate everyone tuning in whenever and however you're watching or listening, whether it's on YouTube, Facebook, or you can find us on pretty much all podcast platforms. Today we're talking East Carolina football. A week ago we caught up with Pirate OC Donnie Kirkpatrick, and right now we are joined by fourth-year defensive coordinator Blake Harrell. Coach, welcome back to the show. Yeah, appreciate you guys having me on. No doubt, Coach. Uh, I know there's a lot of quiet. I think Stephen Iga from Hoist of Color said quiet optimism. Um, but I wanted to talk about for, my first question for you is: from the time you started to now, can you talk about the depth, especially on the defensive side of the ball? It looks like that we've got a lot of talent, and it's not just like before when you guys first got here. I know you were behind Coach Houston, but you don't have just the ones being good. You have like a whole bunch of guys behind them that are good, also, right? Yeah, I think defensively, you're always looking, you're only as good as your backup, and you're always looking to build depth, and we've certainly been able to do that the last couple of years, and I think one of the places that shows is the D-line. Uh, we're going to have, uh, for the most part, not a whole lot of new names up there. We're going to have a lot of familiar names, but it's two, three deep at every position, and um, that's what we've been able to do just by playing a lot of guys, for one, but the way we practice and the way we go about our business and the way that the young men prepare, and when their opportunity is called, they're ready for it. So that's that's been a secret weapon for us, just late in ball games and the fourth quarter of just getting some fresh bodies in and, and uh, guys that are ready to go and when maybe the offense is a little bit tired and, and we can take advantage of them. Coach, how hard is it in this day and age? I mean, it must just be so crazy for you now with the, you know, the portal catching fire the way it has. It, it seems like, you know, you, you get so many new players into the program how difficult is it for you as a defensive coordinator to get these guys up to speed, you know, ready for week one in such a short period of time? Yeah, you know, obviously the uh, the landscape of college athletics is changing. I and mean, it's, uh, you know, it changes things like hourly, daily. Uh, every time you open up uh, your email, there's a new rule getting passed and tweaked and whatever it may be to NIL or, or to the portal. Um, but there's been some, some blessings come our way for sure, some additions to our roster that I think are going to um, – you know, make the Pirate Nation really proud come this fall. And I think any time, whether it's a transfer um, coming onto campus, coming into our program, or a freshman coming into our program, it's our job as coaches and my job as defense coordinator to make sure we're thinking, keeping things simple enough so our kids can go play fast and execute. And that's really, we talk about our defensive culture, we want to play fast. Well, how do you do that? Uh, you do that by keeping it uh, simple, sound, um, and not allow a whole lot of thinking out there. It's something guys can go react and they feel really comfortable with. So we want to make sure we're doing a good job in our teaching and in our classroom and in practice, you know, developing a skill set will give them a toolbox to go be successful. But at the same time, you know, having carryovers maybe from one defense to the next defense to the next, that hey, they're able to do a lot of things but doing really well. Coach, before we talk about a lot of that personnel and I mean some of those familiar faces on the defensive line and then uh, – some of the, the newer faces on the other two levels of the defense, uh, kind of along the lines of what Matt was saying, um, the changes in the college game, the recruiting calendar has changed significantly over the last couple of years. Uh, I know you guys have been uh, extremely busy during the month of June, which is a little abnormal, um, but um, uh, you know a lot of hard work paying off. Yeah, what, what an awesome month June became for uh, you know for college football and for Pirate Nation, and just get, being able to get a lot of visitors on campus and. Um, recruiting is full speed, full go ahead, whether it's from uh, camps, prospect camps, little kids camps. Uh, we had a women's clinic this past Friday night. And then we also uh, top that off with official visits where we, we host young men for 48 hours and kind of show them everything that East Carolina has to offer, why it's so special here and, and why we're so proud of our, our Pirate Nation. And uh, been able to kind of get some guys. Uh, pledge they're coming to school here, you know, in the next signing class, and and just uh, really excited about that. So it's, it's been a, a full go, full speed month, but a really good month for Pirates. 
Hey, Coach, one of the things I noticed was before Mike Houston came aboard, we couldn't get guys in the 2-5-2 to stay because we were losing almost every single game. I don't blame them a bit. But when I look at – I know you can't talk about specific names, which is fine. We don't want to break any rules. But when it comes to guys in the 2-5-2, it's great to see those guys staying home. It's, it's huge, and that, that's so important to, to me, Coach Houston, and, and our football program. Is just, hey, if you're from Eastern North Carolina, we want you to feel like East Carolina is home and always will be home. And I think anytime you can convince a young man to stay at home and play for the hometown team, he, he's got a lot of pride in that, and, and there's a little something extra there. So uh, we've been blessed to be able to do that in the last couple of recruiting classes, and hopefully this one coming up. And, um, you know, I, I think that will even continue to grow with even more than – more and more success we have and uh you know talk about the portal if a young man happens to sneak off and, and get away hopefully he's a guy that we can get back on the back end so uh, it's been really good for us and, and just uh you know when you have success on the field i think it all carries over for, for recruiting uh for, for the fan base and it gets a lot of excitement and another thing too is just for the high school kids and the high school prospects in this uh, area for them to come over and catch a couple games in the fall and see this this special environment and see Fire Nation and see Dottie Fickle packed out, uh, that's pretty special. And there's not a whole lot of places they can go do that. Coach, last week we talked to uh, Donnie Kirkpatrick about several of the changes on the offensive side of the ball in terms of the coaching staff. But um, you had a change as well. Jules Montanar coming in to coach the corners. Um, he's a guy that's certainly very familiar with the American Athletic Conference, having been at Temple in South Florida. Yes, we, we have. You know, Able to able to hold on some guys. Coach Tash is going on year five. Uh, Coach Weaver going on year four, and Coach Dallas going on year three. So some familiarity with those guys and with uh, with our players for those. But was able to add uh, Coach Jules Montan onto our staff, and and uh, like you said, he he's familiar with the American Conference, so there's no learning curve there, and, and doing a really good job fitting in. And then uh, you know our off the field staff has had some change over as well. We we added a new defensive analyst, uh, Tyler Allman. Uh, he was at South Florida before Georgia Tech last year, so he's got some familiarity with the conference. And then um, we had a graduate assistant as well, Kyle Jackson, who's doing a really nice job in, and in recruiting and on the field. So excited about our defensive staff and just what they're bringing to our young men and, and the way they're they're pouring out to those guys each and every day and helping them grow. Coach, you know, I, I've uh... – always said on on this program that I, I really believe in your style of defense, you know, a multiple defense that, that seems to be in attack mode. Um, I really think that's a great fit for East Carolina, and I've been really vocal about that, you know, over the years. Um, one of the things I wanted to just kind of ask you is just kind of looking at this from a personnel standpoint, you know, you can do so much as a DC when you great, get a great pass rush. And, and you know, I'm just kind of curious if if anybody's kind of jumping out at you at this point from, from the standpoint of, you know, just rushing the passer, getting after the quarterback, maybe a new name or two that uh, yeah. really popped this spring. Well, well, two things that make a really good defense coordinator. One's pass rush and one's guys that are able to play man. And I, think, <laughs> I think we're going to have both of those this year. So really excited about that. And I'm going to become an even smarter coach, you know. Uh, but, you know, I think the one that stands out to me, I, you know, it's a, kind of a new name. He played nine snaps in the NC State game last year before he got hurt. But he's working his way back to being full speed and healthy is Josiah Robinson. Uh, he's a transfer from Michigan State. You know, in fall camp last year was kind of a, a dude, so to speak. You know, stood out. Offense had a hard time with him. And, uh, you know, the nine snaps he had in the NC State game looked really, really good. And he got hurt in that second quarter. And uh, we really missed him as a pass rusher. He may be one of our better ones. But, you know, Jeremy Lewis is, a, is in, you know, his last year of eligibility, and and uh, he, he has some procedures this this, uh, this winter time, this winter, but he's going to be back full speed by game one and doing some things now in the off season. So, uh, you know, just we're, we're probably going to use him more in rushing the passer. I think last year we dropped him a little bit, some things we had to do uh, just to protect our defense, but I think we got to use him more in, the, in getting after the quarterback and finding places where we can we can bring him on, you know, to, to rush the passer. Also on the defensive line, some familiar names, um, you know, Chad Stevens and Xavier McIver and Sue Rad Ware, uh, Elijah Morris, of course, who earned that scholarship a couple years ago. Um, tell us about some of those guys. Yeah, same names we've been talking about for a couple of years, which is awesome. You know, if you, there's places you want to be experienced. It's definitely the D-line and safety, and that's certainly where we are. 
it's hurt to Chad Stevens, just the way he plays the game uh, at the field end position. And, uh, you know, Chad's a guy that if you ask him to, to move inside and when we go three down, odd front, he can play the B gap or you can put him on the edge and he can do a good job rushing the pass right there. So he's a converted linebacker. And um, I, I think he's using him to drop in the pass game as well. And, and he understands the game of football. And then you, you mentioned Elijah Morris, and there's nobody in our program that works harder than Elijah. And, and you know, he, he – he caught a tough break there at uh, Navy. If, if they probably don't throw that flag, we probably win that ball game. Um, you know, it was early in the ball game, really missed him down the stretch. But uh, Elijah's done an awesome job, and just you know, me and him kind of got in here at the same time and have grown up here together. And and just watching him grow has, has been really special. And Sue Rad, McGiver, Deontay Johnson, all those guys. Um, you know, just they're, they're energy guys, they're experienced guys that bring a lot to not only the defensive line but to our our football program and our defense so really excited about having them back jack powers is another one um you know this he's awesome out there he's one of our leaders on defense sets the tone tempo and and we've done some things in the off season here too we just you know whether jeremy and, and jack may flip an inside backer and play a little backer too so they've, they've had the flexibility to do that folks no doubt about that flag against uh against navy i <laughs> I, I recall watching that game and i on tv and I just thought it was one of the worst calls I've ever seen, honestly. And uh, I felt very bad for Elijah and you in that situation, honestly, because you, yeah. you know that was a big yeah, play in the game. It um, was. I think it was getting ready to bring up a, a long and third and forever, which is tough for Navy. And uh, not only that, you know, Elijah's probably maybe our best defensive lineman against it, the triple option. So we were really missing him that game. Yeah, Coach, I wanted to ask you. Uh, I remember looking at JD Lampley's film coming out of high school and. Uh, really impressed. I, I thought, you know, I, I really thought he moves well for a big guy. He obviously played a ton as a true freshman, which I don't think most people realize how hard that is to do. Um, can you talk a little bit about his development? Yeah, we we try to keep JD a, a secret so nobody, uh, you know, poaches him or steals him away. But he, he won't be a secret come this fall. And uh, I was just looking at his body this morning out, out on the field running around and you know, he's getting rid of some of the, the the baby the baby face body and the baby face, and just kind of turning into a man. But the way he moves, whether it's on the edge or interiorly, um, and, and his power he plays with, he's going to be special. And um, he's a lot a lot of fun. Sometimes I, I think he's still just kind of growing. And each and every rep, he gets better and better and better. Um, the same thing we used to say about all those older guys years ago. Now we're saying about JD, but uh, athletically, he, he can be a very special one. Taking a look at that next level at linebacker, um, obviously some guys like Zakai Barker, Taylor Jackson, Mike Edwards, Jack Powers, uh, who are already on campus and that, I mean, have very high ceiling, so to speak. But then, uh, Taquan King coming over from A&T and all conference performer BJ Davis from South Carolina State. Yeah. And, and really excited about this group. And it's probably the group that, uh, has the least experience as far as on the field playing experience for the Pirates. Uh, but if you look at maybe where they came from, they've had a lot of experience. Um, so Taylor Jackson played in the bowl game. He's a guy that's going in his fourth year in the program, been around since day one. I think me and him came in. He got here about two weeks before I did. Um, but Mike, you know, so I, I, if we were playing tomorrow, that would start as a Mike backer for us. Uh, alongside of him would be Mike Edwards, who uh, didn't play much for us last year. We moved him out to Sam, played a lot of special teams. I think he led our, led our team in special team snaps. Uh, but the previous year, he played at Georgia Southern and played over 500 snaps. So he's played a lot of ball. Uh, Mike's really good, knows for the ball, really good in the run game, and, and just kind of a different player between the lines. So, um, you know, for us, he hasn't played a whole lot in in a uh, ECU uniform, but he's played a lot of college snaps, so that's good. And then, as you mentioned, you know, Taekwon King and B.J. Davis, again, haven't played a snap for the, for the Pirates, but they've played a lot of football. I mean, B.J. Davis is – I think three-time, four-time All-Conference, All-American uh, Player of the Year. You know, same same with Taekwondo All-Conference. So, um, you know, they they both bring some length and size to that room. So, really excited about them. You mentioned Zakai Barker, who was kind of the the spring game standout for us, and you know, works his tail off. Missed last fall with a uh, injury, uh, but just you know, a, a solid kid inside. Uh, and really excited about him. And then at Sam Backer, we uh, you know returned Kingston McKinstry. We've played the last couple of years for us in and out of the lineup, battling some injuries, but he's back in full health and, and really been healthy as long as uh, a time period since he's been here, you know, all spring and all summer and putting together some, 
some really good months, knock on wood. And, um, you know, Rod Rod Dilworth, the transfer from North Carolina, is doing a really good job out there as well. So really excited about those two guys. And then you'll probably see us play with a, a nickel. Those, those guys are more sandbackers for us. Um, in the years past, we just, you know, whether it was uh, Gerard Stringer or Jira Wilson, we just let them in the game and kind of run our whole package. And, and I think you'll see us moving forward kind of, you know, Ra Ra and, and Kingston will be more of the, the Sam and the nickel may be more of a Jordan Huff or a safety type body and play more man out there with those guys. So that's where I see our, our defense evolving come come fall. Coach, you know, when you when you follow recruiting, you know, it's interesting. It it probably the numbers probably aren't as uh extreme as it as it appears. But like I was joking around with a friend of mine calling ECU uh D B U because it seems like we've recruited so many defensive backs this year, right? And yeah. uh a lot of new faces, you know, uh, a lot of, you know, additions from the portal, from the high school ranks. It uh, seems like you have a lot of great players to work with there. Uh, love to hear about that room. Yeah, I guess I'll start in the safety position with two guys that kind of familiar to all of us, and Julius Wood and Tegan Wilk. And that's kind of, you want to be strong up the middle, and, and those guys up the middle, and, and definitely good players for us. Julius, I think, is as good as any safety in the conference, um, you know, to the field, and and uh, Tegan Wilkes, uh, you know, my favorite ball hawk of all time, just really good at getting the football out, fitting the run, coming downhill, and, and just really excited about those two. Um, you know, I think another name that, that's been here, played a lot of special teams for us, is Devin King. He, he's the guy that used to play in some safety position as well. Um, you know, out wide, a guy that played in the bowl game a little bit for us, I'm, I'm super excited about him. He becomes my best friend every day, is Javon Revel. I mean, we're talking about a, a 6'2", 190, 200-pound kid that, can run and cover and it's long. I, I keep, keep joking around calling him the next sauce starter, and he keeps looking at me and says, I don't want to be sauce. I want to be Siobhan. I said, well, hey, you can be whoever you want to as long as you play like sauce. So, But he's, he's got some length and really excited. Uh, Isaiah Brown Murray is, was a freshman, true freshman for us last year. He's back. Tommy Brown's another transfer out there from North Carolina. He's had a good spring, but having even a better summer. And just you're seeing him kind of getting the hang of it, kind of, fitting in now as far as just the culture, how to do things um, on and off the field and doing a really good job out there. And then we've added some, um, you know, some freshmen, I think, are going to help us and, and just give us some good depth there as well. So I, I think both, you know, the safety and the corner position, uh, we've got some names back, but we've added some new names. And I think we've got some guys that are going to have to go compete and, and earn it, which, you know, makes everybody better. Quick quick follow-up on that, Coach. You know, you mentioned Siobhan Ravel and, it seems like the one the one word I hear a lot, like whenever I listen to the coaches interview uh, yourself, Coach Houston, is the word length. Uh, yeah. it, it seems like that's a word that's that's you know you all have been looking really hard to, to add some more length. What does that allow you to do? I mean, does that allow you to get up and press wide receivers a little more when you have that kind of length? Yeah, but if our whole defense we're, we're longer, we're more athletic, we run faster, and, and you know when you're longer in the secondary or in a linebacker room. It just shrinks passing lanes and passing windows. You know, if you're a corner, it maybe allows you to get up there and, and use your length to press a guy. Or let's say, uh, you know, it's a jump ball and it's a fade ball and you, you, you've you got an extra step that you can stick a longer arm in there to, to punch the ball out or go up and get the ball, whatever it may be. So uh, there's there's a lot of ways it plays, you know, plays in. If you're playing zone and, you know, now you, instead of being a 5'11 kid and you're 6'3", six, 6'2", six, and you put those arms up, now the quarterback's got to throw it a little bit higher, put a little bit more, you know, a little bit more air under it. Well, that gives a DB a little bit longer time to to, to jump under a pass or something. So, and, and then up front, having length. I mean, when I think up front, Sam Bank is probably six four and could be a young guy you see rushing a passer. And now he's he's sticking a hand up, and the quarterback, you know, he knocks the ball down, and the quarterback has to throw it around him. So a lot of good things happen, you know, when you're you're longer, you're more athletic, and you, and you run better. No doubt, coach. coach yeah. A couple questions I had, Coach, was the fact that uh, off the field really quick, uh, talk about the importance of number one uh, with – we're talking about the indoor practice facility. I know that I think uh, John Gilbert's been on our show and Ryan Robinson, about, we have around $15 million. looks like they have to come up with 22 to $24 million. But talk about the importance of the Pirates Unite campaign, in particular with the indoor practice facility. Yeah, first of all, I just want to thank everybody out there that's supporting that and, and behind that and, and really pushing for, for the indoor and, and the facilities and everything they do for East Carolina and, and athletic program. Um, but the, the indoor facility is so much more than just a place for us to practice 
uh, get out of the thunderstorm or get out of the heat for a snap or two. Um, you know, I think about this past June, you know, how many uh, the kids camp and just, you know, hey, we didn't want to have the kids in the heat. Maybe one day we could take them inside or the women's clinic. There's so many other venues uh, that you could use that indoor facility for to, you know, make it usable, not just for a practice situation. But then, then you roll around the fall camp, and I'm just looking at, you know, days that we're going back to back uh, practices in the heat and how quick that zaps our kids. And you got to be careful about the install there. Well, th- there's ways you can get out of the heat with an indoor and, and keep their legs on them, keep keep them hydrated, a little bit more fluid. I mean, we go outside twice a day in fall camp, once in the morning to practice, once at night for a walkthrough, and even for the walkthrough at night. And we all we all live here in East North Carolina. You you walk outside and mow your grass for 30 minutes, and and uh, you've lost quite a bit of fluid. And that's the same thing these young men are doing. So uh, it would be so huge. And, and not only that, you know, we we've got. Uh, other other group of five schools, we don't want to talk about, you know, Power Five, but other group of five schools within our conference, within conferences that we may call ourselves superior to, that uh, they have indoors and we don't. And I think that can that can play a huge, huge role when a young man walks on campus. And he wants to, you know, these recruits, they're looking for a university, a facility, a program that can help them be the best player they, they can be. And if, if they see, hey, an indoor is going to help me, train harder, get more practices in, um, you know, allow me to kind of spend some more time at the game and, and perfecting my craft, well, maybe that's what they choose. So I think it could be so huge in so many areas of, of our game for our program and for our university. So just kind of shifting back to the secondary, um, I, I realize um, we, we talked about Tamir Brown and Dee Nash um, coming over from the University of North Carolina, but um, Omar Rogers. Um, from Elon, uh, I don't. I don't think we talked about him. Uh, he was an All CAA performer there, and uh, obviously the CAA is the, is right there. You know, one of the better leagues in SCS. That's right. That's right. Omar's a, a outstanding young man, and uh, kind of playing the boundary safety force. And, and like you said, was a All CAA player at, at Elon. Had a really good year for them. Has played a bunch of snaps. Just hasn't been in the East Carolina uniform, but he's been on a on a college field with college competition, and we're excited about him, you know, not only for our defense, but a lot of these young men are going to fill up our special teams, and we always sell that to the defense. It's like, hey, you're controlling basically two-thirds of the game. You control defense, special teams, and because uh, a lot of those, you know, cover guys and uh, will be made up of, of defensive guys because they can run and hit and cover and do those things. Coach, you know, uh, you take a look at the early schedule this year, and 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 man, what what a challenge it is, and you know, obviously, you know, taking a look at the opener, you know, uh, I'm sure, I'm sure, you know, when you anytime you line up against the Michigan Wolverines in Ann Arbor, it gives you some sleepless nights. But on the flip side, I think the great thing is that it keeps your team completely focused and has their attention all throughout the summer and the spring. Uh, what are your thoughts about playing a game like that in Week One? You know, what what an awesome uh, challenge we have, you know, with the top of our schedule, starting out with Michigan, followed by Marshall and App State, and even Gardner Webb. Just really excited about that schedule uh, for our program, for our young men. And, uh, you know, we, hey, we go up to Michigan, we're going we're gonna to see, see how it goes. We're going to let it out there and, and play our butts off and prepare. And like you said, it, it kind of, you know, we're talking to, the, to our guys today, said, hey, we're working on shifts, trades, and motions today because that's what you're going to see game one against Michigan. So we're already locked into that and um, ready to ride with that. And, and, you know, Coach Houston already told our guys, the team that goes up there and, and does a better job of executing and makes the less mistake is the team that's going to have a chance to win the ball game at the end. That's certainly true. I mean, 2018, I went to the University of Alabama. I think they had uh, two uh, Jalen Hurts, a couple of running backs, and all those receivers at the time, so several draft picks on the O-line. Um, and we, we were 10-10 to 10 with them at the halftime. So, um, you know, you, you never know. you you got to go in there and, and put your best foot forward and, and kind of see what happens from there. But we're really excited about that. And then, you know, coming home versus Marshall should be a huge game. Uh, Marshall's had a really good program and, and won a bunch of games the last two years. I think they beat Notre Dame last year. Um, and, and then in the chance to go back up to, you know, face up against App State in Boone, that'll be a huge game up there. Um, so really, really good, good, tough schedule starting out, but how, how else would you want it? No uh, doubt, Coach. You. And, and uh, by the way, Matt, I was going to brag about you for a second. You guys in 1996 with Logan 
Coach, she, the, we call them the giant killers. They went down to the Orange Bowl and beat Miami 31-6. to And so we're hoping that we have a new generation, the next generation of giant killers with you guys in Michigan. Well, I, I promise you, if we hold Michigan to six, then uh, there'll be a <laughs> celebration on that plane right back. <laughs> oh Not my just God. the back of the plane either, the front of the plane. And a lot of people that put bets, a lot of people put bets on East Carolina will be celebrating too, right, Matt? I, I, I keep hearing that, uh, you know, a lot of people are talking about going to Ann Arbor and uh, they don't, don't want to miss it, but they also don't want to miss the celebration when we kick Michigan's butt back here in Greenville. <laughs> now, Coach, I had a question from uh, Kyle, our co-host, who could not take part this afternoon. But uh, Kyle was just saying, entering year four of you coordinating the defense, you know, you know what's your um, what's your feel on things overall as far as the progress you've made and you know areas you still like to make progress. One of the things that I, that we've talked about is just, and I, we've heard you talk about it. Obviously, year one, you you were very blitz heavy, and uh, as the talent and depth has improved and not as much so uh, if, if you would and also touch on that as well yeah I, I think each year you got to find your identity uh for your football team and your squad and, and what your guys are able to do best i don't think you're one it would have mattered uh if we were blitz heavy or drop eight heavy you know, had some deficiencies there that we had to get past and, and grow up to and and then uh you know year two we, we're really strong in certain areas. Third down defense was one of those. This past year, really strong in run defense, really strong in third and short goal line situations. So we got to we got to put all that together. And I think uh, you know we, we got to continue to stop the run, but we got to find ways to deny the pass, get after the pass rusher, and get back to being aggressive. And I think some of that's going to be allowed by our personnel. I think you know. We, and I'm bringing it out again, but I think we can play some man. I think we're more athletic. And, and when, you, when you're able to do that, I think it allows you to do a lot of different things defensively. No doubt, Coach. One of the questions I had for you, too, is before we let you go, I appreciate your time today, is uh, we've got to get the numbers up for season tickets. Another off-field question, but extremely important. Uh, I think we've got 13,000 or so, maybe close. No, I'm sorry. I think it's over 14,000 now. But how do we get that number up, and what would you say to Pirate Nation to uh, go ahead and buy their season tickets? Yeah, we, we need to pack out Dowdy Ficklin for sure. That, it makes a huge, huge difference uh, to our players and to our atmosphere. You know, not not only um, when, when you're in the game and it's third down and, and everybody's rowdy and, and uh, the offense jumping off sides and we get a chance to back them up even further and our players feed off of that, but also just for recruiting, and, um, you know, we talk about this all the time. The talent in Greenville, just the way East Carolina supports, you know, the entire nation supports East Carolina and so good for our economy in Greenville and, and just so many things playing a factor and just so important for for our program and uh, athletics and, and definitely uh, on game day makes a huge difference. Coach, I heard uh, recently, maybe last year or so, that it's over $2 million impact for hotels, restaurants, for game day. So, uh, extremely important for economics for Greenville and, and surrounding towns, too. My hometown, there are people that stay in Williamston, where I live, because they can't get a hotel room in Greenville, 45 minutes away, Kenston as well. But we appreciate your time so much today. And do uh, you have any final thoughts before you go? No, I just, you know, that's, that's awesome there about the hotel fact. And maybe we should go in the hotel business or the Airbnb business for, for game <laughs> days. Uh, but again, all seriousness, I, I just, you know, th- thanks to the fans out there that, to support us, fill up that stadium each and every week, and behind the Pirates and everything that you guys are doing, whether it's the indoor or NIL or whatever it may be, it, it makes a difference. And uh, and I always say this, it takes everybody. And, uh, you know, if we can all pull together and pull in the same direction, this is a special place, and, and we can put a special product on the field that we're all going to be proud of. So uh, I'm really excited about, you know, this fall, excited about our defense and the way our kids are working and the, and the way they go about their business every day. And, and uh, I'm ready for September. So go Pirates. And so- yeah, 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 yeah. My heart.